Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on a measure of bond risk called returns value at risk or returns VAR. The reason I'd like to relate this to yield value at risk or yield VAR, we're talking about bonds here, is that this measure of risk, returns VAR, is a key measure of bond risk that we use in mapping a fixed income portfolio. So specifically for my FRM candidate customers, this is really referring to Jorian's Table 8.4. And again, the key measure of bond risk is returns VAR. I'd like to show you how it relates to yield value at risk. And so we start with just some assumptions. What we have is a term structure, one row per year, first year, second year, third year and then these yields or spot rates that are input and so at one year the yield is 5.83 percent and we're going to assume these are the spot rates on zero coupon bonds they could be zero coupon treasuries and what this gives us then going out 10 years is a theoretical term structure of spot rates now if these are zeros we know that the Macaulay duration that's the measure of duration that is really represents the weighted average time to receipt of cash flows so for a zero the Macaulay duration always equals the time to maturity at three years if it's a zero coupon bond the Macaulay duration is three the modified duration is a function of the Macaulay duration in this case at three years I take the Macaulay duration which is 3 and divide by 1 plus the yield. And so that gives me the modified duration that is more relevant for us in practice because it's the measure of sensitivity. And we can see as we expect each modified duration is less than the term to maturity. Here at 4 years here's the spot rate or yield for a zero coupon at 4 years and the modified duration is going to be less than four. At five years the modified duration will be less than five. Now let's just look at the two measures of risk and because it's a bond we can look at this in two ways in terms of price returns and in terms of yield. This column is the same as this column so I'll put the price here as well this column is price returns value at risk this column is also price returns value at risk so I start just by inputting in some assumptions about the price returns value at risk what does that mean if we look here at the four year term we have a price returns value at risk of almost two percent what does that mean that means given some level of confidence maybe 95 or 99 percent and a selected time horizon maybe this is one month then the worst expected change in price is two percent and now we can think about the a key formula that certainly as FRM candidates we need to know and this is the formula that relates duration to the change in price so what we have here is a the percentage change in price given here on the left that's a, for a small change in P divided by the price so this is a percentage change in price is equal to negative the modified duration d asterisk means modified duration times a change in yield and so this is or this should match our intuitive understanding of duration where we say if the yield changes by one percent here that's D of Y change in yield if by 1% and we multiply by duration the price will change in the other direction by that percentage so if duration is if I take a look here at my for three years my duration is uh, 2.8 almost 3 then a 1% change in yield is going to correspond to 1% multiplied by negative almost 3 that gives us almost negative 3% so our duration is telling us that if the yield goes up by 1% the bond
price will change by or go down by almost 3%. So given that formula, that's not necessarily itself about risk, so we just add the risk language to this or wrap the list risk risk language around it and now we have the VAR or value at risk of the percentage change in the bond is now a function of duration and the value at risk of the yield. So see how we've gone from the duration formula we probably already know as FRM candidates to the relationship that now adds value at risk to it. So now we have the worst expected percentage change in bond price is now a function of duration multiplied by the worst expected change in yield. So if we keep that in mind, we can see now my yield var right here is simply my price returns var multiplied by modified duration. And see that's just because here's my yield var I just divide duration on both sides and so it's my price return var divided by my duration and that's what I get here in each case yield var is price returns var divided by modified duration and notice as Jorian notes the yield VAR is, all, in this case, just happens to be all about half a percent. Pretty constant, not a surprise. We're assuming with duration is a single factor parallel shift in the yield curve. And now, just to go back the other direction to get my price returns VAR again, I mean circular here, but only to introduce, the, only to show the concept. If I now wanted my price returns VAR at four years, well, I've got that formula already. Price returns VAR. Worst expected percentage change in bond price is equal to the modified duration multiplied by the yield VAR. Straightforward linear relationship. And that gives me this column here. So for example, at 10 years, with some level of confidence my worst expected percentage change in bond price is 4.25 percent. This is David Harper the Bonnock Turtle. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.